Well, good evening. It is the first week of the Friday editions of Eternal Flame News. I am your host, Jeremy Caverly. This is the 30th of March. Today is a historic day in, a, in the world because what's happening today? The global march on Jerusalem was for today. For those of you that are participating in Facebook chats, Twitter chats, live stream chats, thank you guys for coming all across the globe. Uh, I'm going to get right into the global march on Israel coming up here in a moment. Um, there's a few other things I want to cover as I'm continually watching updates. The girls, there's a lot of good news that has happened through prayer and fasting of Christians and Jews across the world. Um, the violence that could have happened is not as bad as, as it seems. But um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about with you today, particularly um, is a different uh, way of thinking and a way of people trying to move forward in the thinking of the mindset that we currently have in America. Uh, one of the things that I've been looking at today, and welcome to GBTVU that's in the chat. I see you guys sitting over there in the live stream chat today, checking out those that are on the Facebook and Twitter feeds as well. Welcome again. Um, one of the things that I was quite curious about today that, that I've seen uh, and, and I've had this conversation privately with different people at college and in my home or on the phone is what's going to happen on Sunday for America, particularly um, pertaining to our tax rate system. I'm going to show you guys a quick little graphic and you really need to wake up and attend to what in the world is happening here. Check this out. Um, the United States is the first column you'll see right here on the far left um, and then over here on the far right is of course Ireland uh, if you notice this is over 35 percent tax rate uh, the number two category is actually Japan and what particularly is happening in Japan is they're lowering the rate of taxes now um, for those that were familiar with Herman Cain, he wanted to lower do the whole 999. Um, we were hearing Obama talking about 25%. That was the other big news that was happening. I'm just going to keep this image up while I tell you this. The other big news is Biden was talking about this global tax of like 25-30%, uh, which the word global creeps me out to begin with. Why do we need a global tax? Of course, I think uh, what he may be trying to explain and say is, is a tax pertaining towards... Uh, goods and services imported and exported out so on and so forth but the wording is is real creepy um, this tax chart is from the Senate Republic uh, Policy Committee and what is so curious is the mindset across colleges and across uh, the, the the left and, and, and the right is the issue of taxes just in general why in the world um, should we that we're supposed to be the superpower of all global society. We're supposed to be the country that everyone looks upon for an example of Christianity, an example of how our finances are ran. Why do we have the highest tax rate? It's a question I ask everyone today. Why are we having such a, a massive tax rate? You know, over 35%, which when, when, the, when the tax rates change uh, on Sunday, you know, Obama's talking about a proposed 28% and Republicans have a little plan. I'm real curious though, could we really get to this lower tax rate? And if so, what does this look like? Uh, I have a friend, uh, a former CFO for a medical company that I've interviewed a few times, Mr. Alan Davis, who is now the uh, president of our, our city council here in Chillicothe. And one of the interesting things that I've, that I've seen and I ran into is that uh, I'm not quite certain, and he's not quite certain what it would really take to make a transition from a higher tax rate to, like, say, 20%. 
how much would actually be taken out? Would it come out of the of the federal side towards the military, Department of Defense? Would it come out towards the subsidies in the medical realm? There's always going to be this balance of power going on when it comes to something like this. But but let me show you a little snippet of what I'm talking about when it comes to the global march on Israel as well. Um, and it's in hand in hand with this whole tax rate too, which I'm going to connect all these different dots of pieces of things together here at the end so you'll better understand and we can actually move forward to a different direction. Now when I go and look at the Jerusalem Post, uh, you'll notice that from when I followed the Global March on Israel, because this is like the sixth year that they have talked about wanting to move to a different direction and try to uh, have more peace is their, is their key words. Um, I've looked all over their official uh, gm2j.com websites and the interesting thing that I've ran into is the radical factions as I pointed out before for we have Jeremiah Wright wanting to be involved. We have all these socialist groups. Then we have the Palestinians. Then we have articles talking about how Iran, Egypt, Tunisia, all the Arab Spring nations endorsing this event and uh, I sit here and look at, at, at this whole entity in one big package and what I question myself is what is the bigger plan? Now this is um, the 36th year of a march on Israel. 36th year talking about how they feel that this is an apartheid. Now I'm just trying to give you a background of what the Palestinians are trying to say. And the reason why they're using this word apartheid, it's quite simple uh, for those of you who, who can connect the dots. And I've said this before, the, the global team that went into South Africa to end that version of apartheid, the uh, particular man that's involved from England, has actually transversed from South Africa and brought his team to do negotiations with Israel, Hezbollah, and Hamas. Um, they mentioned it in, like, in the subtitle text at the end of the movie Endgame, and you can do like a search online. I'm not pulling that article up because that's kind of not relevant to what I'm going with, but you need to know this snippet of information to understand the language and the terminology of what they're trying to do. They're trying to find that um, springboard, so to speak, of what what can be said, what can be done, and and how do we as a, as a people and, and a group work together towards getting something to work. So here, here we go over here in the Christian Post, um, and I only got like a snippet of it showing because I want to show you the official uh, Global March on Israel's websites, their particular speakings. Now when you see this, you just see that there's just the one Palestinian killed, Dozens injured in the West Bank, Gaza, and clashes. Police, border patrol arrests. 34 activists during protests. Akala Inda, LGM, Bethlehem. IDF, real tests still to come. Now, the reason why they're saying real tests still to come is the language there again, to understand the culture of the language of what's particularly happening over with this March of Israel. They're wanting to create... And uh, for, for American purposes, they're wanting to create an Occupy. For those that are looking at a bigger global thing, they're wanting to create Arab Spring Part 2. Because radical Muslims would want nothing more. Hezbollah, Hezmas, uh list goes on and on, would want nothing more than all of Christianity, all of Judaism to no longer exist in the Middle East. That is their ultimate goal. Uh, why would you want not want to use words like apartheid? Because they're angry uh, when when you come over here to the Global March on Jerusalem site, and and I can type it in the chat while you guys see this little image here. Um, the website for you to go to is G M two, the letter two, and then J dot com, the letter J. So that's G M two. The number two, letter J dot com. Now I'm I'm just gonna look through a few of the articles here for you guys 
for you to understand. Uh, and, and it went from just being like the few in the Middle East to a worldwide event. There's colleges all week and part of next week are going to be promoting what they call a worldwide tolerance towards Palestinians and Christians that have been persecuted by Jews. That's the terminology they're wanting to use here. I'll say that again. They're wanting to say that Palestinians are being persecuted and held pretty much psychologically or physically held hostage against their own will because they're not allowed to have their own set country. Even though historically Israel is the land of the Jews and it has been since the beginning of time in any historical book there again when we look at the radical left you see the radical left actually transforming history books now I know this for experience because I'm currently reviewing a few books right now that are currently in publication at colleges across America and even some high school books that have recently made changes in the last few years and key things like capitalism um, the forming of governments the history of nations and even more specifically the updated version of the Time magazine release talking about the three national faiths in the middle of Israel how the Judea, Jews are represented how Christians represented and then they changed all three of them to make them all look nice pretty and fluffy and that there there wasn't really you know that, that something bad happened but we're gonna get past it that this is what we need to do to fix it and they don't really get into the bread and butter of some of the older publications see that's the thing about the left and that's the thing about those that don't like truth especially if it's written in stone meaning if it's a broadcast such as my eternal flame news or say it's another broadcast uh, regular newspaper you can pick up in your hands physically hold it or say uh, you know a book um, what happens is when you want to try and have a viewpoint come across what do you do when you're the radical left you end up wanting to rewrite history you want to express your opinion and I've noticed that especially being a, at, at a liberal college for a couple of years now um, being a Christian being a conservative is not something they'll even endorse they won't like they will just pretty much try and make you be non-existent and that's why I end up making these programs because I want people to to wake up to a truth that there again some people may not even know about so so then so then we go and look at something like this the, the global march in Australia I mean this is one of the things that, that blows my mind that um, it's not just being done in Jerusalem and, th and that's why I guess there's like a big media blackout about this I've seen the Christian Post talk about it I've seen Glenn Beck talk about it I've seen a few others talk about it but I'm not seeing ABC, and I'm not seeing I'm, I'm not seeing a lot on Fox. I'm not seeing the content matter of how this was important in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s when stuff like this happened. There used to be an on-air, you know, someone in country representing, bringing you the message as it as it goes on. It's just being a small five or ten minute snippet of what's happening. And are you hearing how it's being endorsed by socialists and communists and radical? Muslims who are saying, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, since we can't forcefully get in here, let's try and find a peaceful way where we can uproot them, so then we can cause this chaotic theory." Because that's what they're wanting to do. When you want to do that whole scenario where you want to cause chaos and discord, and it was kind of done to me at the college when I, I've stepped down for different positions. Uh, what they'll do is they'll try and put you or a situation or a group of people where you're being oppressed by a, a majority group to transform what you actually physically say and do and they'll try and send little key points and people and messages through other different various reasons and keep changing the different uh, look of who and what you are now when you see things like this happen you have to wake up to the bigger picture of what we really are and who we really are in society because if you don't then you're just missing out on this 
opportunity to take a stand for the truth. Because when when your truth is placed under pressure, it's going and this is what the left wants to do. They want to find people who are unstable in all their ways. So if you are a short temper, it's easy for you to cuss someone out, get angry. You need to take check of yourself. The longer you continually try and share a message of truth, whether you're a Christian or not, if you're a conservative, you are completely under attack right now. If you support Israel, you're under attack right now in some form of another. It may not be a physical attack. It may not even be a verbal attack. It's just the surroundings of what you do. Because at some point, you're going to be tested for what you believe in. Now we have... Um, I have another story I want to cover on the site too. This is Beirut. Um, now, interesting about Beirut is I don't know how many of you guys remember the 80s with Beirut and Lebanon and the crisis between the United States and the Middle East, so on and so forth. We're talking about Palestinian refugee camps. That was like one of the biggest paragraphs that I've looked in this statement here. It's right here. Um, they're saying there are about 268 activists from Europe and America have arrived in Beirut. About another 150 to the Asian nations. Now, what I'm curious about is how many people are actually able to take these words apart and look and see the bigger defining meaning, the bigger purpose of what's going on here because I mean I've shared with you guys before that something just isn't lining up when it comes to these events and I honestly believe um, even though like I talked about the, the last week of the last week of the two week phrase of where we were having Eternal Flame News Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock. Um, I ended up saying a phrase similar to something what I'm going to say now. I'll paraphrase it. That I prayed uh, for the last two weeks for Israel and the people involved in this march. Because I didn't want anyone to die. Because I realized the bigger picture. We probably have about four years to reach another Christian motif. Which is a 40 year. There's the 3, 7, and 40. Those are always big important moments in Christian and Judaism faith. So I'd say about four years from now, of course this has been going on for about 36 years, but we didn't have the capability of the internet to look at a massive amount of data and a massive amount of people combining their efforts because I really don't think they could have accomplished this global march on Israel without the internet being in existence. Um, I believe it's going to take about four years for them to really start moving beyond the normal circumstances of who and what they're trying to accomplish. And I think and I think uh, people need to realize oh yeah we have someone in the chat asking a quick question about what's the link to the Facebook chat. Uh, the cool thing is about JMC Live and Eternal Flame News on the live stream network is we can chat via the live stream chat you can chat via your Facebook account, and you can also chat via your Twitter account. There are three ways you can communicate with us live on air. And of course, uh, the messages are saved until I clear them out. So if I miss one, I can go back, check them out, send a message, so on and so forth. So we have three modes of communication to be able to work with us on air. That's what I think is so cool, because I'm sitting there looking... Um, because you can check in, check in chat, that's what they call it. I'm looking at my screen here right now. Um, you can check in chat, uh, live stream, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's hashtag JMC Live for the Twitter. Or you can just log in your Facebook, and I, you can say something right now. Um, I wrote like a couple of days ago, welcome. Uh, I can write something now and say we're on air. Um, it's just an amazing way that I've been able to do stuff. And of course, I can sit here and see. I just sit here and just updated it right now. Wrote on air now. That's just like one of the wonderful opportunities we've had to be able to connect with our viewers and listeners. It's through Facebook. It's through Twitter. It's through the live stream, emails, messages, so on and so forth. Um, it never ends of the opportunities of what we can be able to do here today. Um, 
But like I said, that big purpose that I wanted to share with you guys today is what a time that we live in as Christians that we need to continually pray for Israel. We need to continually fast and, and make friends with, 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 with Jews and make friends with everyone so we can wake up to the realities of the bigger picture. We do realize as Christians, for those of you who are listening to the program that are Christians, you realize that at some point Israel will be under a massive attack. The end of days will be here. There will be an Antichrist. These are just stepping stones towards that capability. The more the internet is available to people, broadband is given across the world, worldwide, satellite communications, uh, things like Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Livestream, the list goes on and on. The more people continually move up in education and just the fact, I look at the, the book of Daniel, and it says in the book of Daniel that in the end times, Knowledge will increase by tenfold. And if you can't tell me in the day where you have an iPad, iPad, iPad 3, all in like five, six years of you know, a time, I remember having a TV, and before the next TV was really anywhere good, it was like five, ten years apart. Now, computers, cell phones are being updated three or six months apart. You buy a cell phone, it's $199. Two months down the road, bam, how much is it? It, it, there's another one. It's $199. We have something better and even bigger. I want to welcome the new person that showed up in the, in the live stream chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am paying attention. Okay, now here's something more international for you guys outside of Israel that can affect America. And as far as I'm concerned, when I go down the street and I look at $4 gas, um, this kind of story does upset me and make me have to be concerned. British petrol panic puts heat on government. This was on abcnews.net.au. Now, when I sit here and look at this, and I'm seeing this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, possibly ten different gallons of different sizes. You see that? Seven to ten, because there might be more in the back. This man has already paid 58.80 of 42.33 liters of gasoline and I, I don't know if it's illegal in his you know in, in the British world to be able to fill up that many uh, containers but when I see someone fill up that it reminds me what happened in Georgia and Florida and elsewhere where um, there was a big panic because there was a shortage here in America with gas um, this is why I've asked people, uh, and I know some people like the hybrid cars, I know some people like the natural gas. Where I live, um, there's a few people that have the hybrid cars. You couldn't really get a natural gas car because it wouldn't work. My question to you today without freaking you out and scaring you and you blow your brains out or whatever, um, what would you do if you couldn't fill up your tank of gas for, say, three weeks? I'll ask it again. What would you do if you were here in America and you had 24 to 48 hours to fill up your gas tank um, and probably the closest place was 10 to 35, 50 miles away to get the next gas. It happened here in America more than once. It's, this is happening right now over in, in Britain. What would you do? Uh, most people would just get in a panic and freak out and what they've done and this is the creepy thing that has happened and with the current administration continually writing these executive orders and some of the executive orders that are currently in effect from the prior administration current administration and those even further back if they've taken the time to even look at them uh, this could happen British police closed petrol stations to stop panic buying as government faced criticism for warning motorists to stock up ahead of threatened strike by tankered drivers. Yeah, and you have a good point about Ford. I'm looking in the chat. GBTVU is talking about Ford come out with an HCO car they're supposedly working on. Yeah, I've seen the hydrogen car. Um, when I was in California, I saw someone actually drive one around, uh, around Point Reyes, going to San Francisco and back and forth. 
Um, why is it not coming now even further? I've seen people in, in other countries come out with uh, bodily fluid cars uh, and so on and so forth. And I've kind of done a little study on background of how many oil companies have bought the trademark. Specifically natural gas and, and the, some of the hydrogen cars. Uh, what That's what they're wanting to do. Uh, the contingency plan, and that's the big word for it, it's what you do when they finally get to a point, the, 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 the oil companies themselves get to the point where, and I'm looking at my map over on the side of me, what happens when we get to a point where 100% across the board, the left and the right can agree, scientists can 100% agree, there's no more fossil fuel as we know it. Like, you break the rules of where you can drill, and you drill everywhere in the whole wide world. What happens, you know, five years from now, 25 years, 50 years, however long it takes. Different scientists have said different years already, how long it's going to take before we run out. Well, let's just say we get to that point, or right before. What do you do as a, as a media a mogul slash corporate uh, financier? What do you do? Well, you start buying trademarks of other forms of fuel so eventually you know they're gonna rack up the price of gas until people can't buy it anymore and and they try and do this to us all the time I mean gasoline in America and across the world unless you live in the countries where the gasoline's being made which is quite interesting it's quite cheaper there than it is everywhere else and it's not so fluctuated that's something you don't hear mainstream media talk about um, this is the one thing that the world is bullied by that's a word really big going on because the whole movie bully and its rating system going on should it be PG-13 should it be R yeah it should be R should kids see it that's you know up to parents and I believe there's a big issue with that movie and that's a whole different story but I, it's kind of something on the lines of what's happening right now we're being bullied by those that have this capability to uh, have the gas, to be able to sell the gas. And I understand about people making money, but when you hear the president of Iran and you hear OPEC and, other, and others talking about, well, I don't like you, so we're going to raise the gas. Or, or there's this terrorist thing, so we're going to raise the gas. This is not going to stop unless somebody really steps up to the plate and move forward in a direction and a plan that goes beyond any of this weird stuff that you see because I'm really worried as countries like Britain which you know is an ally of America um, what do you do? Um, how do you do this? and I'm it's going to get to a point where we as Americans are going to have to make key point decisions. Key point decisions on what's important. You know, when I was a kid, it was decision on who had food and, and, and you know, who had medical and stuff. I, I understand that. But, you know, if you're in England right now, what are you doing? How are you getting there? And I'm going to show you a clip. I'm not going to play the audio because it's quite interesting. Here's the clip clip on YouTube about what's happening right now. And you'll see this you see the line at the gas station at the pump. Um, it it's just frightening to see the desperation of what people need to have. And I mean, yeah, gasoline is important. I believe we're way 1900s, 1928, 1930, 1940, you know, when Ford and, and, and even when we started going overseas with Toyota and, and, and so on and so forth, other companies making cars and then you know, the conveyor line and so on and so forth, what are we doing to keep from this happening? If you notice, that car is practically, yep, now here it is. This car is already in the road that... I call it minivan, so on and so forth. And it looks like the one right here. Look at this line. Here it is. There's more. The whole it's gone all the way out of the of the building. And you know, 
They're calling it a localized shortage, queues, and some profiteering at the stations. Um, price gouging, as we want to call it here in America. Um, workers in five oil companies have already voted in favor of industrial actions over terms, conditions, and safety standards, but none yet have set a date for a strike. Negotiators said talks on the strike will not be held before Monday local time. The government has said it is training up an army tanker drivers to take over in case the strike goes ahead. You know. The biggest issue is if you are in Britain, uh, like the firefighters are saying in this article, and I know this from being on the Coast Guard, do not use an illegal container to get your fuel because depending on how that container is made, it, the, the gas itself could leak a hole through it or better yet it can, can bust depending on when you try and open it again um, or you could just you know still inhale the fumes because it doesn't seal properly um, so what else has happened in this Britain's Petrol Retainers Association says so about 5,500 garages as petrol sales increased by 81% and diesel by 43% on Wednesday. This isn't about a panic because if the government gets in control they can fix this situation. This isn't like the end of the world. Gas is still going to come to Britain as long as people remain calm because if you get out of control and you start running to try and get all this gas you start trying to do this then there's going to be a bigger issue trying to deal with trying to take care of people and lord forbid if anyone does something stupid which that's what normally happens in these situations is about trying 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 to curve the different things that have happened now on other news um I remember when I was a kid, the song Hot for Teacher was playing. Um, I don't know how many of you guys love those long hair days of, of the 80s and you know Van Halen and, and other bands like that, but uh, that was a joke with the kids, the boys growing up. You know, I think this teacher's cute and well, I think this nurse is cute or this doctor's cute and you know, I can only imagine. You see movies of you know fast times at Ridgemont High. I remember I remember kids always quoting that stuff and the generation above me was quoting things of, of that and I, I realized for just a snippet for those of you that have seen that movie the mall that's in that movie I've been to that mall it's in Santa Rosa California um, that's just a weird non factual true fact goofy thing to share with you but what what did you do what would you do if I told you that a state has been to court with a ruling on ethics, a ruling on responsibility, and the boundaries between a teacher and a student. With of age, mind you, um, 18 years of age in Arkansas, a student currently in class rules that their teachers can have a sexual relationship with their of age students now here in college and when I was in school uh, one of the big interesting things that I saw and noticed was that people continually changed the way they act amongst each other and it was jokes some were serious you know I remember growing up as a kid, and even still now, the men would get arrested and the women would get away with it. I mean, just now, there's recently that real pretty blonde girl, um, her name just slipped my mind. I had it written down. can't find it. But the biggest thing that slipped in my mind here, and I'm looking at this stuff, um, we've changed the way we look at gender when it comes to a student to to teach your relationship. The men go to jail and labeled a sex offender. The woman gets probation and is set free. But then I look at this goes way beyond 
anything I've seen, and this is at CBS Local. Arkansas, Arkansas Supreme Court on Thursday struck down the state's law banning sexual contact between teachers and students, finding that people 18 or older have a constitutional right to a consensual sexual relationship. A cons constitutional right. What happened to the constitutional right of ethics that if you are a teacher, you are there to instill truth, not your sexual genitalia into that person's body. Because if I was an 18 year old kid that was unstable and I was dating my teacher, and even if I was, you know, even if it was just me being stable, uh, I remember being 18 years of age and I was in a relationship, the only thing I could do is just stare at the girl like, wow, I'm with you, man. Do you really think a kid is going to be able to pay attention in class? A boy pay attention to his short skirt girlfriend teaching class? Do you think the kids are not going to sit here and make fun of them? Or much less wanting to know about details or something about this? There won't be any education other than sexual education. What about those students that are going to feel less privileged if this student is dating this teacher and has all A's. What's to say that they didn't have the answers? Because this student is able to go to this kid's house. And and at this kid's house the teacher comes. Or the or the or the kid goes to the teacher's house. I mean what's to say where the line is crossed? Just because you're of age doesn't make something okay. And as a Christian, I you know I, I'm promoting sex you know after getting married, uh, but as a Christian, I think if you're in a role of leadership, those that you are mentoring, you would not want to. And this is the key phrase that is used uh, when when trying to help. Uh, a recovering addict or, or help someone who, who's been abused is not be taken advantage of again because don't you think this is going to open up the rulings for pedophilias and so on and so forth you know teachers to want to you know have their little jollies because you can't tell me that a kid is going to wait till he's 18 to hit on the teacher or the teacher to wait till he's 18 you know, so if this happens in Arkansas, which consequently, you know, that's where Bill Clinton's from. I hope Arkansas is where he's born. Um, what's going to happen in the rest of America? What's going to happen in the rest of schools? In the rest of colleges? Businesses? Um, I've always seen drama growing up when I was at fast food places and so on and so forth. Different jobs that I've had where the issue at hand was well you know he's getting to spend too much time with his girlfriend or she's spending too much time with this it's getting to this point where nothing seems to matter anymore and if we continually move um, in these directions where we don't seem to have a concurrent set ruling of where the line is drawn and it shouldn't just be well he's 18 she's 18 then what are we trying to do with ourselves where where are we trying to go today what is the most important piece of the puzzle how, how can we um, systematically express truth in this nation when we continually want to redefine what this truth means. Does that make any sense with you today? Redefining truth and what love and prosperity and order and rules and regulations are. Understanding that time and time again people want to go and look within a ruling to see well is this constitutional is this not constitutional constitutional for a 
a student teacher relationship now my study of the Constitution I'm not seeing anyone actually showing that this isn't you know bad there's supposed to be that statute of limit of favoritism and I would think in the constitutional law a student to faculty member because I'm assuming they don't just mean teachers it means any faculty you can go out with the, the lunch lady to the superintendent to the teacher and so on and so forth um, that's across the lines barrier that you're not supposed to do in the public world so why would it be okay in a student world that troubles me now I wanted to end tonight's show on a good note and it's gonna take a while to get through this so we have about 20 minutes where I'm gonna explain a recent Gallup poll how 40% of Americans describe themselves as conservatives. So the Miller McCune Smart Journalism Real Solutions asked the question, is conservatism our default ideology? It says new research provides evidence that when under time pressure or otherwise cognitively impaired, people are more likely to express conservative views. Well, that might be a lot for you to swallow. Cognitively impaired, likely express. I've talked to a few people about this article. And those that want to look at the negative extremities of it, they're saying, well, well, when you're forced to just make a quick quick judgment, the solution under fear, and fear alone, well, you're a conservative. Um, yes, according to this poll... 21% of them call themselves liberal, and 35 of them call themselves moderates. And of course we do live in this um, haphazardly uh, state in America where we do go back and forth, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Occupy, Tea Party. And I've heard that sentence mangled together in all different ways. More taxes, less taxes, spread the wealth, don't spread the wealth. These are the kinds of terms thrown around America today. But the interesting thing, and this is kind of kind of funny, uh, this is a research team from the University of Arkansas. Psychological, psychologist Scott Eidelman argues that conservatism, which the researchers identify as an emphasis, and you guys got to see this because it, it quite stands out, an emphasis on personal responsibility, acceptance of hierarchy, and a preference for the status quo may be our default ideology. If we don't have time or energy to give a matter sufficient thought, we tend to accept the conservative argument. It says, furthermore, in our next little wonderful paragraph here it says when effortful deliberate responding is disrupted or disengaged thought process become quick and and efficient quick and efficient yeah I can totally send you all these links I have no problem sending you all the links of everything we talked about today and when I make uh, our, our YouTube video today when we make our podcast all of the links are going to be listed underneath in the perspective podcast and YouTube so then you can actually see what we're talking about so I'll have those videos made sometime later this evening um, but what I'm finding interesting in here It's this next paragraph. We do not assert that conservatives fail to engage in effortful, deliberate thought. They insist. We find that when effortful thought is disengaged, the first step people take tends to be in a conservative direction. So, according to their psychology, that more people are prone to be conservatives if they're wanting to slow down. The whole statement of do more with less. from values, experience, history, culture. 
But here's the cool part that he says here that will make many of the radical left freak out. The bad news for liberals is we are saying that conservatism has a certain psychological advantage, Eidelman said. The bad news for conservatives is that someone who has a knee-jerk conservative reaction may change their mind about an issue after giving it more thought. Giving something more thought. That's a question I, I have for you today. Can you... Uh, stay conservative after investigating more information can you stay with whom and what you are and hopefully those links work if not like I said um, I'm gonna post these uh, videos with the links later this evening and I also have the uh, March on Israel I'll go ahead you have that one that I showed you there but uh, I think in society today that when you start to personally want to pursue your own education outside of just whatever somebody says like you know uh, people in our chat you YouTube Facebook myspace etc people and this is why we created eternal flame news and this program is I didn't want to just sit here and tell you the news without you being able to read for it yourself and say here investigate this look into this for yourself learn about what we've come from and where we're going as Christians and in society because if we continually move in a direction that's away from Christ um, away from a form of conservatism because being a Christian has its liberal moments like God wants you to love everybody that's a liberal kind of ideology but being a Christian means you're supposed to be conservative in what you consider right and wrong and I've had this and I've stay away from debates but I've had conversations with people particularly those in the gay lesbian uh, bisexual transgender realm saying I don't agree with your sexual activities but you're still a human being and I still love you but what you're doing is wrong I realize that we can actually change and move to a different direction um, when people realize that something happens and things transform more and more situations can move us in a key point in time that uh, others just don't seem to understand and that's why I realize that when we continually move forward in sharing a truth without compromising a core belief that no matter what anyone else says never changes but how we get the message out can change to where either they can't say anything because that's the goal I have other I have three goals is that you're not gonna change you are gonna change or you're not gonna be able to do anything about what we have to say because I want people to have freedom to make their own opinions about what we share today and I've been attacked I've been verbally attacked online and in person I've had I've had a tire busted you know I, I, I've seen all sorts of things just about being a Christian and sharing that yeah it when you are wanting to do something like uh, your political issues or your 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 your, your life um, there is a psychological advantage to being a conservative because being conservative means you're, you're you're doing more with less it's also a Coast Guard model do more with less although I understand uh, the Coast Guard does need new ships because you know they're falling apart there does come a time when the whole of our lives and the whole of our governments and so on and so forth does need repair and that involves normally less government less hands on things but in some cases I've experienced at college um, if you don't have enough hands to get something done or you have the wrong hands working on it nothing gets accomplished you just keep sitting in, in a constant cycle of, of a void um, that's what I get worried about um, I was talking to one of my classes earlier this week that I feel especially you know people were asking about racial tensions I said I feel like we're in a 
in a uh, neutralized zone when it comes to this because I believe that we can really move to this point there's a focal point coming in our lives in our community and society where something that's bigger than ourselves is coming to all of us and it's coming to a head it's not it's not just the election it's not just the global march on Israel it's our personal lives and how we treat one another I've noticed there's a whole culture shift of the younger generation growing up with faster equipment better technologies but how we actually treat one another has changed what's important in my generation is not the same as someone who's five ten years younger than me and even older we we're, we're losing a piece of the puzzle and it's quite simple today to figure out how to get this back um, it takes people individually looking at themselves and doing this personal inventory um, and yeah uh, the guy in the chat is saying it dehumanize uh, uh, working on less means you're being efficient yes efficiency is something where you get to this point in your life and you figure out exactly how many people and things do you really need uh, in the economic world you can hire 100 people to do a job but then you start to lose money if you have too many people working on something that doesn't require that many you find the right balance then it dehumanizes people yes that's what the chat you were saying today that you're completely correct on that um, when we get to a point where you kinda lose your place in this world and you lose your purpose and focal point and you're pulled in too many different directions uh, and too many things are, are grabbing for your attention you can't be the key word that I'm gonna use out of context but proper context is potential see America has a potential um, we, we, we call it in the history world uh, exceptionalism America exceptionalism uh, um, more current term is superpower for those that remember the 80s, 70s, 60s, so on and so forth. Uh, these are terms that you don't hear anymore. Um, you're hearing global. You're hearing new world order. You're hearing uh, tolerance. You're hearing diversity. And there's nothing wrong with tolerance and diversity and working towards together for one another to help one another. But when you look at society as it is today what we're trying to accomplish in the world and with a, an election coming up we have issues in England and the EU and so on and so forth with petrol and, and, and gas we're going over here in, 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 the, in the US we got teachers having sex with their students and then we have a lot of other stuff we're going to cover tomorrow on eternal flame news uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick little uh, preview of tomorrow's show. Um, tomorrow's show, we're going to talk about legislation in Tennessee protecting faith groups. We're going to talk about um, why young people don't want to attend the church anymore. We're going to talk about racism. I'm actually going to share with you what I've been working on about Treyon and the, the Zimmerman thing and what a Christian's role pertaining to race is and not this not this left let's cause chaos and discord I'm going to show you what Jesus Christ actually says about dealing with racial issues and who actually has judged this I have a quote from you for tomorrow we're going to talk about um, how the New York City Department of Education is banning words and what you're allowed to use on tests and then we're going to get a little into Bible prophecy, just a snippet, and talk about computer chips being placed in school uniforms. That and even a lot more because I'm going to cover some of the Eternal Flame news articles, maybe some of those that are the top for the week. All this and more on JMC Live tomorrow. That will be this Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, there's, there's going to be a lot more coverage as, as we continually go on. Um, like I said, this is the just a phase two 
of a JMC Ministries network. I said that last week. I'm saying it again. Um, I can't tell you everything that we have planned, but for the last two weeks where you saw six days of programming, um, it's going to look something like that in the future. Uh, we will have uh, many more programs planned. Um, so there's a lot more in store beyond just what you saw today. Uh, hopefully Sunday we'll have posted a James C. Bites devotional for those of you that want to you know, get into the Word a little bit. I'll have that posted. If Miranda gets well enough and we can sit down, we might record some music in about 10 weeks from now, work on some songs, so on and so forth. Uh, the puppets. People have been asking me about the puppets. Currently the puppets are actually with her sister, so that's not going to be happening anytime soon. But um, there again, so many things are happening all across the globe. I'm just giving you a snippet of what's happening and exactly what can you do as a human being, as a Christian, as a conservative, whatever you want to define yourself. If these stories affect you. You know, you, I understand some people want to just share them, and that's fine. Um, I want people to get a little bit further and get educated on why are these things happening. And then take another step out of your comfort zone and say, okay, I've been educated. I'm hearing about what he's talking about. I'm hearing what others are talking about. I'm seeing how the media is working. What can I do as a Christian? What can I do as a conservative? And then connect the dots towards the next step of how you can become an active member in society and making a positive change for our country, nation, and world. That's the goal. But it starts with one person listening to a message. It starts with one person wanting to question something. Wanting to understand who am I and why am I here? What can I do to make a difference? This has been Eternal Flame News tonight. I'm leaving you with that thought. What can you do to make a difference in your world? Right wherever you live. You've heard a few stories tonight. Now. It's up to you. To carry the message on. I am Jeremy Caverly. This has been Eternal Flame News. We will be on air Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Right here at jmclive.com. And for those of you who are interested in even more. Of a biblical standpoint. On society and our world current events. Tune in tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. The jmclive.com. That's 9 p.m. Eastern, jmclive.com. Thank you for coming. We'll see you tomorrow. If not, we'll see you next week at 7 p.m. Eastern. Good night.